My name is Dr. Charlie Hall. I'm current holder of the Ellison Chair in International Floriculture, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the ninth lecture in our Distinguished Lecture Series. Uh, we have a very distinguished guest, as the title fits, Mr. Bill McKinley. And I'm delighted to introduce Bill today. Bill is a graduate of the University of Missouri, and I don't think he's going to have too good of a weekend. <laughs> hmm. uh, but he does have a Master of Ag degree from Texas A&M University. And, and right now, he is the, uh, the Ben's Chair of Floral Design, and as such, serves as Director of the Ben School of Floral Design here at Texas A&M which is the only school of floral design in the entire world, not just the country, but the entire world that is accredited and affiliated with a higher education learning institution, particularly one of this stature. And uh, the Bend School, as you can see from the atrium, is also housing an incredible uh, a, a gallery of floral art and many of the pieces that are here in the atrium today have not necessarily originated from Texas. I'm not sure if you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but they got here as soon as they could, as, as many things have. Uh, Bill has had a very uh, diverse and illustrious career. When he graduated here at Texas A&M, he spent a couple of years working for Flora Life which is the company that enhances the shelf life of flowers. And he uh, owned and operated his own florist business here in Bryan for three years. And then Kishwaukee, the college, uh, Kishwaukee College, right? Am I pronouncing that right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Kishwaukee College called and made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And he taught horticulture at, at Kishwaukee College for several years, and most recently has served as associate dean. Now, during that time, he maintains very strong ties to Aggieland, and uh, in, in, on many occasions served as a, a teacher in the floral design school here, and his uh, close friend of Jim Johnson, his predecessor, and has worked very closely with Jim. So naturally, it was just intuitively obvious that we should hire Bill as our uh, Ben's chair. So we're delighted. His first official semester was this semester, and he's teaching 13 courses. <laughs> Not exactly. Seems like it. It, it seems like it. And um, Bill is a, a very delightful person. He is um, uh, very adept at information technology, and I think you'll see evidence of that in his lecture. So join me in giving a rousing Aggieland welcome to Bill McKinley. Thank you, Charlie. I don't know that I could remember all those things, let alone someone else remembering them. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be here, uh, and thank you for coming this afternoon. Um, I'm going to make myself a little bit more comfortable. It's hard to do what I'm going to be doing in my uh, sports coat, so you've seen me in the sports coat, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it off and uh, set it aside here. Uh, information technology and computers uh, has, is certainly not a new thing, and we in uh, horticulture have embraced that for, for many years. However, uh, those of us in the art area of floral design specifically uh, maybe not have uh, utilized this technology to the best of our advantage. And so that's really what my talk about is today, is shrinking those distances that we have, not only nationally across the country, but internationally, and using our technology to be able to collaborate, to see visually, to see what it is that that uh, is possible in certain circumstances and in, in, in all of the venues that are available to us uh, from that respect. So um, I typically uh, run my seminars very informally. So if you have a question, don't wait until the very end because you're likely, if you're like me, to forget it. 
So if you have a question while I'm talking or doing a demonstration here, please uh, feel free to go ahead and ask me that question right off. Even if I'm not looking up, just yell it out at me and I'll try to uh, uh, accommodate that. Uh, technology is always a, a tricky thing and I learned a long time ago that you know, if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so if we, for some reason, something doesn't quite click, then I'm just gonna move on and, and not obsess about it. Uh, so let me get going here. I'm gonna start up another PowerPoint. And again, the whole process here, I want to show you so that everybody understands what it is that we do and why we're doing it. This first slide I felt compelled to put in simply as a, a, a background or a backdrop of what it is that we do. The internet is becoming the town square for our global village. And Bill Gates said this way, way not last week or the week before, this was back in the uh, early 70s when the internet was just starting to become part of what it is that we do on a day-to-day -day basis now. So this is kind of the global perspective of what we're doing. I think we sometimes forget because it is a, um, almost a routine that we have, something that we do automatically. Oops, oh, I forgot about that. There we go. Better? my assistant technology person. <laughs> that uh, it's not just corporate. It's not just a corporate world that's dealing with uh, use of internet. It can be anybody and everybody. And as the years progress, everybody has more access at no cost. And that's again part of what my process is gonna to be today is that we don't have to be technological experts to be able to use this technology. It's becoming so easy now with apps and with, uh, e even if you're not into uh, the, the Apple or the Mac side of things, PCs, same thing, it's very easy. And that's what I'm using today is the PC. So let's talk about the types of communications. I wanna build a little bit of base here, a little bit of, of um, background for you to get to where we are now. So what types of communication, uh, computer communications do we have? And I'm gonna start at the top of this chart and talk about the basic, the collaborative and the synchronous. That's gonna stay the same on several of my charts. So when I say basic uh, type of communication, that's point to point. That's like me sending an, e an email to somebody and that's it. There is nothing else. It's just one point to another point. So that's basic communication. And that meets a lot of needs. That meets a lot of what it is that, um, how we function in today's society is that point to point. Collaborative is multi-point non-synchronous. Multi-point meaning many people see it. So like a web page. So I can put the information out there and many people can see it at the same time and it can respond to me. So that's uh, collaborative so that more than one person actually sees it. Synchronous, in case you're not familiar with that word, synchronous is multiple points, real time. So that's like the chat room when you have trouble with your telephone and Verizon and the little chat window pops up, can I help you? That's synchronous. So if someone is real time uh, able to converse with you. But it's non-video, it's non-visual. It's only with text and with chat. And then the synchronous with uh, a visual is real-time video. I see you, you see me, we're talking just like we're sitting in this room and I'm looking at you. That's what I'm talking about when I say synchronous and, and visual. So then what types of communication can we do with this? We've got web pages, that would be basic and collaborative. We've got uh, email, also basic and collaborative. Chats goes over into the synchronous so that we're actually real time with that. SharePoints, SharePoints are things like Google Docs where you can choose who's gonna be looking at what it is you're putting out there. Web pages, specific web pages, that would be a SharePoint as well. Um, that you use in a, a classroom situation or uh, personal web pages as well. 
learning management systems jumps over not only the first three, but also over into the synchronous, into the visual. Um, by that I mean Blackboard, Moodle, uh, those things that we use in a classroom situation where you can actually be standing in the classroom and projecting to 15 sites all at the same time and there's hundreds of people watching like a webinar sort of a scenario. That's, that's a learning management system. And then the web conferencing is very similar to that. So now what's the purpose of these communications? As we build this and then narrow it down a little bit, what is the purpose of these communications? Well, it could be just informational. That's point to point, basic. Simple questions, again, basic, uh, point to point. Decision making now, that might take a little collaborative effort. That might take some people's input in order to make those decisions. So we'd want to go with something that's a little more collaborative in nature, that you can get those multiple uh, inputs from. Uh, evaluation, such as uh, an exam for a learning management system, an exam. Multiple inputs from that. Student, instructor, student, instructor. And that can be synchronous through the chat system. Complex questions, the same thing. Uh, I equate complex questions to word problems, where it's not just a yes, no, it's a multiple stepped question where you may have to, to have interaction. And it might be easier if that were synchronous so that you can get those answers. Can you envision yourself trying to um, troubleshoot I'll use uh, the telephone again, the chat person on the telephone, one email at a time, how long that would take, well, back and forth and back and forth, and they're answering 15 in between. And so the synchronous part of that makes that so much easier and so much quicker. Uh, personally, I just jump right to the chat because I know I can get my answer instead of trying to email them on a one-to-one -one or um, point to point. And then the brainstorming concept, what are we going to do, how are we going to do it, with a group of people, that would be, a, and that's one thing we're gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate today is a brainstorming session, as well as the creative input, which also needs to be uh, with the visual in. Uh, I work in a visual field, and you know, when I say the color peach, you all have a color peach in your mind, but it might not be the same color peach that I have in my head. And unless I have a point of reference with you, it's not gonna ever come out right. So again, that's gonna be illustrated later with, um, uh, part, of the, part of the presentation. Now, in, com in floral design specifically, what can we use this and how can we use it? Yes, we can use it for information. We can use it for customer relations. What a wonderful way to keep your customers in a retail situation is to connect with them somehow on the internet through Facebook, through Twitter, through you know, all the social networks. That would be um, under the collaborative part of that customer relations. Now, specifically education, yes. Notice how in floral design we've jumped all the way over. We're very visual. Most art forms really are very visual. And so the vast majority of what potential lies here includes that visual. And I think that's a very um, telling part of what it is that we do. So specifically today, what I'm going to try to, to highlight is uh, the synchronous visual not only in education, but in a brainstorming scenario, and then in a product procurement. Think about when I have to order flowers. What color are those roses, really? They give me a name. They're circus roses, or they're vendola roses. Well, okay, vendolas come in, depends on the time of year, what color they actually are because of the light in the growing area. And so when I ask my wholesaler, well, what color are they? They'll say, oh, well, they're kind of a pale pink. OK, what does pale pink mean? Uh, but if we have a visual connection, I can actually see that rose and make sure that it's going to be what it is uh, I anticipate. So you're going to have happier retailers, happier consumers, because that's what matches the bridal gown or whatever the, the event happens to be. So now how does the Ben School fit into this? I see this as uh, the potential for us to be the leading collaborator. We're not the first. We have, that's not important. But I hope we're going to be the best when we get to the point where uh, I'm visioning where we should be. So we're going to be developing some online and hybrid course offerings. Uh, I really like the concept of hybrid because hybrid, uh, again, in our field is well, 
do you, floral design via video or via a, a CD is kind of hard because there's no way to get the interaction back and forth. So a hybrid course is a combination of part of it is online, part of it is real time. And so the, this video uh, conferencing really opens up a whole new avenue for us in that respect. So that's, that's where I'm heading in that respect. Uh, we're going to also increase our marketing efforts through digital social media and online resource availability. Um, most retailers are going to tell you that if you're not on a social net, you're missing the boat. You know, if you're not on Facebook and you're not on Twitter and you're not doing those sorts of things, you know, 30% of customers are coming from that. That's a pretty huge percentage. Uh, and then thirdly, promote the use of computer technology through interactions with floral suppliers and organizations and retail businesses. In other words, the industry. I want to promote what we have available and how we can use it. What it is that is available to, to us. Now, let's get to the real meat here. I've built the background, given you some, some uh, perspective, and I have to give credit to my 19-year-old son uh, for, for pointing me in the direction of this particular software. It's called, I call it OVO, whether it's OVO or AVO or UVU or whatever it is, I call it OVO, it sounds better than UVU. Um, I'm not promoting this program, it's not, I'm certainly not uh, gaining anything out of that. But what it is, is a software that allows us to do uh, really those three things that I was just talking about. It's a video collaboration with multi-users and it's synchronous. Many of you may have heard of Skype. Skype is a very uh, good program, uh, but it doesn't at this time allow multi-user. You can't have more than one point to point. I can call my mother and my mother can be on the other end of the Skype, but I can't have my mother and my sister and my uncle, and all, I can't have everybody. This program allows you to do that, multi-user. It also is recordable. So as the host, I can push the record button when we get to that point, and I can use it as a future reference for uh, reviewing what it is that we talked about and what it is that is, um, if it was a collaboration or whether it was the video for looking at the flowers, then I can go back and look at it again. Or I could show my customer. So lots of potential there. And this is the biggie, no cost. You don't have to be a subscriber to this in order for it to happen. You can subscribe to it and you get a little more functions. But as I get to the demonstration here, you'll see the ads. So as a non-subscriber, you have to endure the little scrolling ad that's at the bottom of the screen. That doesn't bother me. Um, so what we're going to do is a collaboration with several people. And I've got about five minutes here to uh, make something. And then we're going to do the collaboration. The theme that we're going to collaborate about I'm going to pull some people into an actual video conference here, is Cirque de Opus. Everybody here heard of Opus, you know, the Opus Gala? Well, this is their theme for this year. So this is an actual theme. Um, my inspiration for what I'm going to be doing is this picture. So it's kind of whimsical. It's not, uh, in any stretch of the imagination, traditional. It's not formal. So I'm going to do a real quick demo here. I've got a lot of it done up ahead of time. Uh, so I'm going to turn the light back on here. And pull up my buckets and do a real quick demonstration. I'm normally not this neat by the way. You know, I certainly don't have carpeting in my lab. <laughs> that would be a very bad thing. So my vase, my starting vase here is uh, a product called gel beads or gel marbles. And these are really cool. Uh, it's like uh, the liquid moistener that you put in potted plants and things like that to keep things moist. But they're, they're in a solid form. And so this is going to be my base of color. 
And so I'm just going to make a couple of real quick, simple designs here. Uh, this is a hydrangea, and I put it in a water tube so there's a water source. So I'm just going to insert that uh, down into the gel marbles for a little rounded top to it. And then put a monstera leaf in on the side. Whimsical, something that's unexpected. When you walk into the room, these are going to be potentially centerpieces sitting on the table um, and groups of these. And a little bit of bear grass shooting out. You'll kind of see a theme here with uh, what I'm going to show you with these things shooting off. I want it to be, again, something that you're not going to notice that you would notice, excuse me, as my brain was processing what I just said. Uh, and you'd talk about it for quite some time. Whoops. Okay, so there's one. And I have another vase here. Big vase. Palmetto palm. A very coarse and very uh, hard leaf to work with, actually. So what I'm going to do is roll that up. Again, I'm thinking whimsical, way outside the box. She doesn't look anything like the normal dancer that would be sitting there. So I'm going to put the leaf in upside down. and put some liatris. So what I did was I've curled that round in sort of a skirt or an apron. So there's a tube here. And so I can disguise my other stems by just inserting the liatris down into that tube. And again, just a, sh a quick shoot out starburst sort of a, an effect here of liatris for color. One more tall one. And then, you know, that is really tall up there. <laughs> the circular or round concept is part of this whole theme that I'm putting together. And so these are Craspidia blossoms. I have to pull that down to get up there. Uh, that I have strung on bead wire. So I'm just going to hang this from the top. Let it droop over on the side. And again, let's put one over here. And maybe one wrapped around that, hanging all the way down onto the table. OK, so let's set that aside and set my table. Before I call everybody, I want to impress them. I want my table set. Obviously, these are not real tablecloths, but it will give everybody an idea of what it is that we're looking at. Bright. Whew. See, let's throw a red one on there. And then I'm just going to group these on the cart. And pull out the others. Now here's the yellow gel beads, so that's going to look better on the red. And then I have a red one. So real party atmosphere here. Boy, 
Wouldn't you like to be sitting at a table with all those sitting on it? <laughs> and there's one quick thing I want to show you here. In the bottom of the yellow one, there's a light. And so in an evening situation, that would be glowing. So I'll try not to spill this, but I have to go back here behind. with this. Okay, so now we're going to make a call to Tina, who's in Florida, Sharon, who's in Atlanta, and Janet, who's in Illinois. So I got to go through these screens here. Going into my chat room. Now I'm going to add to the call. So you're just looking at me right now. All you have to do is email this, anyone. They don't have to be in, in, in any uh, way, shape, or form attached to OVO. So I'm just going to type in there. That's another little dilemma here with, with OVO is I have to type in these names every time. Okay, little note to him, here we go. We have practiced this, so. <laughs> I'm going to assume that it's going to work. Actually, it should work quite nicely. What's gonna happen now is they're gonna get the email that I just sent them, and in it's a link. And in that link, they just click on it, and that automatically then sends me a return that says, they're ready, and I click a button, and, I'll, and there they are. And so as people enter this, then each of those um, videos will just line up. So it might take just a second here. So as we're doing, as we're waiting, and it'll be a loud ring on the phone. I was out in the hall, actually, earlier today, and Oh gosh, <laughs> it's ringing, run. It's louder than my telephone. Um, so I want you to think of just all the potential applications that are involved with this and that the, um, the need in our industry is really there. There's a real desire, I think, for people to be visual and to be incorporated into this technology, but they're just scared of it. This really makes it pretty easy for that to happen. I'll step out of the screen. They're, they can't see me, us yet anyway. Um, what's really nice about this, the OVO is um, you can get up to six at no cost. So you can have six people collaborating all at the same time. Um, the, the real the thing you have to be careful with is though, how much memory do you have in your computer and how much bandwidth do you have? So you start getting up to four or five or six people all at the same time sending video in, then sometimes people will cut out. Their voices will stay there, but the video will cut out because there's not enough room <laughs> really for them to be coming in. Um, Everybody's waiting. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to minimize that. So, so Bill, I could see that if you were managing a series of different greenhouses, <coughs> you would be visually in contact with each of the different greenhouses, let's say, at different locations. Oh, sure. Of this, and you only have so much in each of them. You can use that to help match 
match up mm -hmm. between the different people and the different people that have a total And you can have uh, personnel meetings and, you know, if you're at a remote, or even if you're, you know, at a conference somewhere and you need to have a, a video conference with someone, this is really the easy way to do it. Um, <laughs> if it works. Okay. I'm going to go back. I mean, how, well, there's one. Hello, Sharon. There you are. Hi, Sharon, we're, we're, you're the first one. Can you hear me okay? I need to get your audio to come up a little bit. Okay, I'm turning my audio up. Can you turn your microphone up a little bit? Does that help? That's a little better. Turn your, the volume up on your uh, computer. <coughs> we have about, let's see, about 60, 65 people here. You're on the big screen. This is your movie time. I'm still not getting much audio from you. Now I don't have any audio. Go back and do your little uh, uh, microphone thing that we did earlier. Okay, we have your, vi your visual. Uh, Hold on, Sharon. Check your microphone thing down on the bottom that uh, your mic didn't default over to Microsoft again. That is better. I'm still waiting for Tina and Janet here. Okay. That's on high on everything. Okay. Can you hear yeah. reasonably well? Okay. So everybody's... Okay. If you'll just give us another second, I sent Janet and uh, Tina another invitation. Well, <laughs> I am too. Actually, while, while, you're, while we're waiting here, I'm going to turn my computer. You'll get a preview here of the designs that I did earlier. Can you see those? Fantastic. We should have had those for my daughter's wedding this weekend. <laughs> well, I know your daughter's wedding was actually very beautiful without these. <laughs> so... <laughs> So if, if you couldn't see the color there, uh, there are gel marbles in the bottom of the containers. I'm going to pull this over a little closer. Okay. Okay, I can see them now. Can you see those? Very good. You know, I find that people are terribly interested in the gels because it's something a little different. Right. And it, it's instant color when you, when you uh, walk into the room. The, the yellow one here is also... The yellow one also has a light in it. I don't think you can probably see that on the, without me turning my lights out here, but there's uh, one of those little pin lights in the bottom, the acolytes. Uh, acolyte. Yeah. I think that's one thing that makes the design so interesting because most people are not familiar with acolytes. So it's, it's eye-catching. 
Oh, here comes Janet. Hello, Janet. Hello. <laughs> You're on the screen now. Oh, well, technology, you got to love it. Absolutely. So we've got Sharon, you can see, yeah, see Sharon there. We're going to, we're going to go ahead without uh, Tina. I actually uh, talked to Tina this morning and we got her uh, Mac to work on the computer, but she may have had some more difficulties. So we're just going to kind of move forward. So Janet, I've already shown uh, Sharon the designs, so you can kind of see they're tall glass with gel marbles in them. Can you see? Mm -hmm. I can see them. So the, the color scheme for this whole thing was mostly supposed to be in oranges and reds, but I threw in that purple. What do you think about the purple? This one. Hi, Tina. Hey, Tina. Welcome, Tina. Hi. Hi, Tina. Can you hear us, Tina? Absolutely. Okay, good deal. There's the arrangements that we were just talking about. Can you see those on my screen there? Yes, I can. Thank you. Sharon was just extolling about the, the virtues of purple. So the color scheme of red and, and red and yellow were, were kind of requested, but I was just saying that I threw in the purple for uh, a little different variation. And can you see the detail here as we're practicing? These are Craspedia on uh, bead wire. Might be hard for you to see that. What color kind of bead wire did you use there, Bill? Here, I'm going to pull it up front so you can see it. It's a uh, hot pink. Well, kind of that round. Like what? It's a great miniature orb. Yeah. into orbs, and that's what that seems to be to the visual eye. Well, I was trying to keep, you know, we've got the round globe form here on the hydrangea, and then the round globe form of the carnation uh, on the other side there. Here. Well, and I like the repetition of the glow, but you get a little bit um, smoother texture with the um, crispidia. So yeah. It's a nice variation there. Why, thank you. <laughs> but another good thing that you've done with the designs is to add the dramatic line of the grass because that keeps everything from being too uniform when you have a totally different shape. Yeah, and it's tickling me in the ear, too. Okay, ladies, I appreciate your, your time here. Um, however, I need to move on to the next uh, part of the presentation and get to the uh, product procurement part. So your, your, vis your visual presence here on the big screen, let's see, that's probably... Each of you now are about uh, three and a half feet by three and a half feet on the, the screen up there. Are you saying we're in a square? <laughs> 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 I will talk to you, ladies. The audience is very brave. Well, <laughs> and, and they're very patient, too. <laughs> so I will talk to you, ladies, later. I need to go ahead and end us. So. See you later. I will be in contact. Thank you for the call. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> okay. With a little minor difficulty, we got that going. And now we're going to move on to the procurement, product procurement. Oh, I should have turned the lights down again. 
uh, and I'm going to call Jenny Stewart, who's with uh, Westside Flowers in uh, Houston. Uh, I have talked to Jenny ahead of time. Not that I was thinking something might go wrong, but um, I gave her a hint on really what it is I was looking for. And what I ordered today will be my order that's coming tomorrow. So this is an actual order. This is not a pretend uh, order that's happening. Um, So what I had told Jenny ahead of time, just so you'll know what she's doing ahead of time, uh, is uh, uh, I have a function that's using terracotta pots as the, the point for the, uh, the centerpiece. So I asked her to pull flowers that would go with terracotta. And so she's going to pull, she's going to actually have a terracotta pot there, and so she'll pull flowers that go with terracotta so that I can see what it is that I really want to choose out of that mix of uh, materials. So while that's processing, and it will work, the next thing on the agenda, and I'm going to show this ahead of time so that I don't have to prep too much, the next process that I'm working towards, and this is going to be a pilot, or it is a pilot, these are, this is a webcam. So when I put these on, actually they don't fit well over my other glasses. Um, it allows me to video anything that's in front of me with hands-free use. And so now I can do the design demonstration hands-free and then give that as a resource to not only my students but on our web page. And I have a sample of this for you uh, as soon as we get Jenny to go here. And it's a title of, a, of a, a series that I'm working on that's called the Designer Perspective because it's the designer's perspective that you're seeing. It's not studio. It's not me standing here and the camera's out there videoing me. It's me doing the video from the designer's perspective. So it's kind of fun. Uh, and of all places to, to, to find these, these are actually sports glasses. They came from uh, Gander Mountain uh, in the sports department. So they're, they're really handy. Uh, I just got it this last weekend, so I've been spending my spare time playing with it. USB cable hooks to the side of the glasses. You export it to your computer. You have your video. It's right there. There's no intermediary process that you have to go through there. Um, the wholesaler that we're going to be talking to is really excited about this process and the possibilities of, of them being able to show other people what it is they have. You know, a static webcam in a cooler or a static webcam uh, with a toggle on it is uh, definitely a, a possibility as well, but to have the interactive part of it is really um, another step forward. Okay, Jenny. I'll send another one if we may have to. Move to the camera, mini cam, and then come back to this. Because I really want you to see my, my first draft of uh, design. Um, uh, Miss Ann, can I ask you a favor? Uh, the design that's on the table where we had uh, cookies and punch, the third one, the one when you're facing the table, the far left, would you mind bringing that in, please? We'll move that out of the way. So I'm going to minimize this and go on to the next step here, waiting for Jenny. This part I've already kind of given you. Short video descriptions, 
highly descriptive, three to four minutes, nothing that's going to eat up all of your memory. Just do it and get it done sort of a process. From the perspective of the designer, the designer, I'm the camera, so I have the glasses on. And I like the concept of it being seemingly spontaneous and not studio in nature. So it's like, it reminds me of Alton Brown and, and Good Eats, you know, when he's doing his little things uh, in the uh, kitchen where he's maybe got over in the corner and, and down on the floor and looking through the refrigerator or looking through the cabinet or something like that. Thank you, ma'am. I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead and go with this video. Jane can Can you hear that? Hey, Ginny and Marianne, I'm going to put you on hold for just a second. Lots of different forms and textures. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be with you in just a second. <laughs> One of those classic moments, maybe. <laughs> So this is this video is actually four minutes and twenty-two seconds or something like that. So this will be on the long side of the videos. Yeah, 
No. No. The only time it's tethered to the laptop is when you're transferring. I'm going to tuck this in one end, the cut end, and then kind of turn the graph over and tuck it in on the opposite side. So I like these, the perspective here of just seeing the hands and not the, not the face. Called sheltering. So whatever it is that you put under the sheltering gets accentuated. So again, we'll do this two or three times. Turn around, contrasting those forms, and then adding a little bit of line to make the design flow from one side to the other. And I will have to tell you, that was the first, first shoot. Because I was running out of time. <laughs> it's like, I got to have. OK, Jenny, Marianne, are, are you still there? There you are. Well, have you got some flowers to show us? You're, you're on the big screen now. I have some flowers to show you. Okay, let's see what you, what you have to go with terracotta. All right, hold on just a minute. I'm going to put Vanna White in charge. Hold on just a second. Vanna? You pull, where's, how did you get the resources to get Vanna? Who would you like to see? The unexpectedness of synchronous chats are uh, uh, something to go with terracotta, Marianne. Do you have something by chance? Oh. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. How about some bicolor roses? Yes, in, a little bit closer to the camera. What's, what variety is that? This is circus. Circus? Okay. I like that. Okay. And here's another one. That's a pretty orange. Sure. What's the name of that one? This is called Rockstar. This is one Jenny wanted you to see. Rockstar. It's a new movie star. <laughs> okay. I think I like the circus better with terracotta, though. I agree with you. Let me show you two more. This would be a garden rose. Oh, that's nice. What's the name of that? That is Free Spirit. Oh. Hmm. And then this is my personal new favorite. Oh, what? So the edge of that, I'm not seeing exactly what the color is. That kind of a pinkish orange, or is it more orange? It's more of a. It's kind of a. Um, uh, a dark pinky, but then in the center it looks more orange and yellowy. Okay. I'm not sure. I mean, I like that coloring, but I'm not sure if it's going to go with terracotta or not. I think you're right with. The, uh, circus being the best. Okay, let's go with a bunch of um, let's go with two bunches of circus. Okay, two bunches of circus. Okay. Let's see what else can I show you? Let's see what else. Um, let's see what else <coughs> do you have? Uh, any foliages that might go with the terracotta? Something. Oh yes, I do. I have some liquid amber. Okay. Actually, I think I've already got some of that coming tomorrow for another order, so uh, okay. I'll have that. We need um, mm, some grass texture of some sort, maybe. Okay, let's see, a grassy, like a lily grass? Yeah, lily grass or, might work. Okay, let me get you some, I'll get some lily grass. So what did you, oh, what? What else did you pull for the terracotta? Well, <coughs> let me show you these. 
a little closer. Oh, hmm. I like berries. Oh, yeah. <coughs> those are nice. Send Did me you one. See that line? Yeah, send me one of those. Okay. So I've got roses yeah. and then berries, and what's I need one more something to go in this. Okay, we got some lily grass. Okay, that works. It's green okay. and not variegated? Correct. Okay. It does come variegated if you like. It just no. doesn't get so tall. No, I want the green. How many would you like? Uh, two. Okay. Would you like... Now, I did show you the Ilex. We do have a bunch of... Oh, how about some red Ostromeria? Actually, I know I need four red Ostromeria for another order, so go ahead and send me four of those. Well, sure, since you offered. <laughs> Marianne, you're too much for TV. Oh dear, and a comedian too. No, I, I think I'll go with the, uh, the Ilex, the orange is much better. Uh, but I do, okay. I do know I need four bunches of yellow snaps. Four yellow snaps, okay. And all of that with the rest of my order that I've already uh, put with you, I think we'll do for tomorrow. Well, thank you so very much for your order. Oh wait, he wants, she wants to show you one more thing. The millet. The millet? Uh, how many is in a bunch on the melon? Okay, if you want this one, or do you want this one? The purple. The green candy. No, the purple. Okay. How many is in a bunch? How many? How many is in a bunch? Um, ten. Uh, 12, 20, I need uh, three bunches. I'm not doing that camera bit. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> three bunches. And I think that should do it. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you for participating in this, both of you. Anytime. Love to do it. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later. Well, that was an interesting, uh, but I hope it was uh, informative for you too. Okay, I think we are coming down to the last s segment here. This is the design that uh, I did video with those glasses, so it's the same design. So if you want to come up and take a look at it that's afterwards, that would be great. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me? Yes. Did you make those glasses yourself? No. So you can actually buy them? Like Absolutely. And you can buy them with camo, too, if you want camo. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so you'll know that. You know, I asked my wife, I said, well, should I get the black ones or the camo? And she says, black, Bill, you're not in here. <laughs> the second question is, uh, on the last video you were ordering, can you actually just like, blow a first screen so it gives you the merchandise better? Uh, with Ovoke. When you get the upgraded version, yes, you can do that. Okay, because that would be Yeah, it would be easier to see if you, if the, you could control the camera. You have to get the upgrade in order to get that um, uh, capabilities. It's, a, it's called a business level. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was in charge of education because for many years, and I've been in charge of With OVO, that's all you can do is six at a time. If you're doing, learn, doing a learning management system mm -hmm. like Blackboard or uh, Moodle, you can, do more, you can have synchronous 
multiples. It doesn't make any difference how many. Yeah. And GoToMeetings also allows you to do, I believe, uh, Charlie, was it up to 20, 25 at a time? Well, thank you very much for your uh, attention. I do want to give some formal thank yous to, uh, uh, first of all, Dr. Hall for inviting me to participate in this uh, lecture series. It's quite an honor to, to be asked to do this, and I really do appreciate that. And to the Ellisons for their uh, uh, participation and endowment of the chair that allows Charlie to ask me to do that. Uh, uh, and then, of course, the horticulture department here at Texas A&M. Oops. My... Uh, <laughs>